Welcome to the webinar. This is Damon Nelson with your host and partner, Wayne Atkinson, and we're being joined today. Uh, this is March 31st with a very special guest, Peter Hathley. And Peter has a product that I have been using kind of in the background for the last, I guess, six months, ever since it came out. I've been using his templates inside of Frage, but he did something special. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And Peter, are you ready? Yeah, I, I just, um, I need to have my video shared, that's all, and um, okay. I'm all ready to go. Perfect. I'm going to stop sharing, and you should be able to share your screen on the share button. It's uh, just to give you a bit of a background, it's five o'clock in the morning here, so I'm, sort of a bit, I'm just having my coffee, so I'm just sort of getting getting up and up and running. So, uh, yeah, so my background was in language research. I did an algorithm called SICE back in, back in uh, about 2015. And uh, that was released on G+. And with, with one of my great friends, uh, Bill Slasky, who passed away last year, unfortunately. But uh, basically what, what this research was about is semantic, predictive semantics. And so what, what it was involved with was actually isolating terms that the Google knowledge base didn't have. And what we were finding is we were actual, actually able to teach the knowledge base information and bring up semantic entities, and uh, they didn't have. And we tested this fully. We'd, we'd put out content that would have these entities in them and watch it get indexed on the, on the knowledge graph. So that was the beginning of my language research. And what, what we really used to create was what we call word banks. And I was working for some, some quite large American companies, one of them being Sears. And uh, well, specifically the, the ones that were, that were involved in, in uh, big data. And so that we'd provide them word banks. And these word banks, you put them together, you'd write, the, write it all together. They're like jigsaw pieces. So you can imagine when AI came along, I was able to put all those jigsaw pieces together. And that's when I got involved with Phrase. And Phrase was a particularly uh, good platform and they're qu quite, uh, quite innovative in the sense that they allowed people to create um, custom templates. And that's where I started building these custom templates. And the templates were more, more based on uh, creativity. And so there were other templates that were out there that were more informational, and but ours definitely had creative backgrounds. I, I was an agency copywriter. I, was, I worked in for agencies, and my background was in agency copywriting. So I was always wanting to replicate that with AI. And it started with Agency Writer. And Agency Writer was the first one I put out, which was around about April last year. And so, so that was, you know, that was a real breakthrough. And it was interesting because I just um, decided to put in a limited, limited uh, time offer. And, uh, and everybody seemed to want it. So it was a really interesting, an interesting situation. And so that's where it really started. And then I, I've built AI Professional, which basically is, is more of a marketing type for marketing experts. Then Semantic Author, which was based for, is for SEO. Conceptual Author is more just for storylines and funnels. Think Differently is really sort of a lateral thinking sort of concept. And Agency Writer Light is, is basically a tool for writing sentences or a, a short paragraph what i should do i'll just um drag this here because I, I can show you the website i'll just get the website running um let me just get a new screen here i'll go to awesome intelligence yeah so i the, the marketing was basically right cool with agency writer and then sprite smart with ai professional then right to rank with semantic author. So those were the original three. And there was a lot of people who bought the triple pack of links that you could work, this, this works with phrase. So that, so basically once, once the uh, templates were there and people had paid for the access to the templates, they had a lifetime license. And that's why I set up the lifetime license deal was because 
that was the only way I could actually do it with phrase because uh, I either shared the link or and then the link was was there forever anyway anyway so that's the reason we started doing lifetime deals so when did you um, get involved with it uh, Damon I think you only had two products at the time. <laughs> yeah. So it would have been AI professional. And interesting enough, I originally called a, a um, AI professional authored intelligence. And then I thought, no, that's a better name as a brand. <laughs> so that's when the brand was sort of, uh, you know, was decided on. And so you can see the whole idea was to write content that most people, people don't think AIs do. And one of the things that I found with, with AI that a lot of people have sort of got a, a completely different perspective of how AI works, I realized that you could author intelligence. So you could you could create a style that then did what you want, like, like an agency copywriter. I've just done one called Hypewriter. It's just a new product that I'm, I'm going to be releasing. And, and that that is like, that's really sort of out there copy. So that's been really interesting. And it's actually Turbo that has made it more possible to do that. And I've been testing that quite thoroughly recently. But then after, uh, after those three, because uh, those were the original three, I created a Conceptual Author. So that was more about conceptual authoring. And uh, so, and obviously people, a lot of people upgraded at that point. And there was a, you know, it's a free free upgrade still, well, well a discount, I mean, uh, there where you can actually click through and, and save, the, anyone who's a current subscriber can save money off that. And then uh, I had a bit of a breakthrough with Prompt Author. Now, Prompt Author was, basically I wrote a book called Speak to the Machine. And Speak to the Machine is was about how you should speak to, and interestingly enough, it's sort of well before Chat GPT, but now we've all we're all learning how to speak to a machine with Chat GPT. And so what what I realized was the instructions that I'd given in the book could be automated. And that's where I created a tool called Prompt Author. And Prompt Author I've got a free tool, which actually is prompt author, prompt author for uh, ChatGPT. And that that allows you to create prompts. Now, they tend to be creative prompts. They're not, not extensive prompts in the sense like uh, a lot of prompt engineering is overly complicated, actually, to be, uh, to be honest. And uh, it was interesting because I saw a, a video with Sam Altman, uh, of uh, CEO of OpenAI. And uh, he was saying, a person asked him a question, um, what, what's it going to be like in five years? Will we still be prompt engineering? And he said, he openly stated, I don't think we will be. And and I've really developed my templates to sort of work off keywords, work off keywords, work off uh, uh, short phrases. But I wanted, there was a sort of thing like writer's block. It was I called it prompt block. And a lot of people go, go into chat GPT and they're not quite sure what to type. It's made it a bit easier with ChatGPT because it talks back to you and it gives you understanding um, just by interacting with it, which I think has you know, made a major breakthrough. Uh, but before that, um, you just had to come up with whatever uh, whatever you thought you should put in the prompt. Now, you you can get a result from web design, but you won't, you know, say if you put web design or any any keywords in it will give you a good result i've i've done it i've written it so it will give you actually good output on those keywords but you'll get a better result if you use if you use prompt, prompt tags which i've it's a really simplified version of uh, prompt engineering I, as far as i know i'm the only one who's using tags like this but i found that i could use the templates i'd built to use uh you know, interesting tags. And one of them was uh, use, using Hemingway's rules. Now, I'll just go back, I'll go back here now that I've described that. Uh, and I'll go to one of the tools and just show you how they work. So you can Peter. just, in this interface, this is the um, interface. Peter, this, yeah, yeah. Uh, let, me, let me interrupt you for a second. Yeah. All these templates that you've made and that you were just showing us, hmm. you you actually have a, in, instead of having to own phrase and pay for the SEO kit and everything else, 
you've made a standalone version, and that's what you're about yes. to show us, right? That you that's don't right. need phrase, you don't need anything else, but just the standalone version works. Absolutely. And and that's that's the big difference here. Uh, it, is, it is actually using the phrase API and uh, the CEO, Tommy, uh, basically uh, gave me some really good, uh, uh, he gave me early access to the API and it gave me a, a good, uh, a good uh, background and provided some good code links and things like that to be able to use it. And so the API is still using phrase, but in general terms, it's using phrase, but it's it's like hopping from phrase to open AI. So it really is just accessing open AI. But the real benefit of phrase is that you can have custom templates and you don't have to write all these huge prompts to get the results. And so and this is what I was basically explaining is that these will do do those prompts for you. So if you go to AI Professional, for instance, and so the tool is very minimalistic. And so you can basically type in whatever you want at the prompt. Uh, there's these tags I was talking about, and I'll go through these tags because the tags are really, uh, really useful. So I'll just go through them one by one. So if we go in to talk about, so say, say we say talk about uh, web design. So it saves you having to type the whole thing in, and those square brackets actually provide, uh, means that they won't leak into your content. So they're very handy for that. And sometimes you've got to use hashtags, but I'll explain it uh, later. Uh, so you can just say talk about and then say uh, you could use um, tell a story, uh, for instance. And that you can tell it in the third person, second person, first person, and it'll write that story for you. So these tags really speed the whole process up. And, uh, for instance, you can also speak like, right? So you could say, speak like a marketing professional, but don't mention it. Now that's interesting, this don't mention it. What happens is if you don't put that in, I can mention, say if you put something really obscure there. And so I, I always like testing this tool with, talk like a rapper, <laughs> because it shows whether it works or not. So you can, you can speak like anybody you like, or, you know, you can, archetypes are in there as well. So you, you build this sort of picture of, of what you want out of it. And then this one here uh, is a prompt, a prompt thing. And by default, uh, what we're working on one at the moment is the default is at all is off, but it will actually write it like chat GPT. And wh what I liked about chat GPT is when it writes like that, you can proof it while it's going. And whereas, uh, you either get a dump of it, and most uh, power users will just prefer a dump. But at the same time, it's really good if you want to proof it to actually see it being typed out, and it gives you an idea whether it's. So I'll leave it on so you can see how that works. So this is a slider which provides different, uh, you know, different uh, out creativity slider, which is used in phrase, and you can use it. I tend to use it at the highest creativity for obvious reasons. And it's even more noticeable with Turbo. So let's activate that and see how it goes. So it's, it writes out the prompt at the top, and you can see see what's happening there. And you do, just wait for the AI to respond. So obviously, it starts with Yo, because it's you know it's a rapper that's saying it, and suddenly, bam, a pop up. <laughs> you know, you can see that the whole lingo is based on the speak like a rapper right now i could have i could have put any, anything in there but what it what it actually shows is the style becomes really affected by just putting that in to speak like so so those sort of so those things are only available in the standalone so the standalone in, in phrase you've got to type all that stuff in right and that that obviously takes a bit of time so you can see this is this is being quite creative it's like a design is like a symphony and um, you're creating a ma masterpiece so grab your bat and let's make some magic happen so it gives that creativity right um and and really urban sort of language uh, so that's that's basically because i put uh, speak like a rapper 
Okay, so so let's take it back and make it um, speak speak like a creative copywriter, which most of us would want, right? So I'll turn the, the animation off just to show you how that works. So you just go activate. And so it doesn't, the text won't animate and we'll just start. And that's a lot, for a power user, it's, it's better to have that. And once you've got it, you can then copy it, which I should have gone through before. And so you can see that this, this has given it more of a more of a creative copywriter's feel. And uh, so even it brings in stories and unique sort of angles and re really has a lot more flavor than what ChatGPT has, which is, tends to be, and a lot of people actually use this. For instance, um, those who've got ZimWriter or those who've got ChatGPT, they can actually uh, paste the text in and rephrase it and get, get an output that's based on what they've got from the other tools. So it's, it's a tool that can help finish off content. And a lot of, a lot of people actually just use it for that particularly per, particular purpose. But it can write really good stuff as well. In fact, I've written a book with it, so it's and it's quite powerful in that way. Uh, you actually uh, copy it, you just click that, so it's nice and simple, and you can paste that anywhere. And I tend to use it with with phrase, and um, so so for instance, I could say take that, and then paste paste it in here, right? And so everything comes in, and then. If you're doing rewriting, the best one to use is rephrase and enhance. That's the tag I use for rewriting. Right? So creativity set there. And let's write it, uh, see what it comes up with. Sometimes it's best to actually nominate the amount of paragraphs you want as well. And that will actually output exactly the amount of paragraphs you want. So you can see this has rewritten it quite quickly. So again, it's, it goes into, you know, it's very imaginative type of writing, and that's because it's creative. It's a creative, creative template. And now, in saying that, semantic author isn't quite as creative, but it still has a creative edge to it, and you know, it just makes the difference when you're trying to rank for. Um, you know, I've, I've actually been. I was talking to some clients um, just yesterday, and uh, about the difference with creativity. And there was a client that I'd had that I'd created a really interesting style with. And it was, it was really comical and, and really sort of entertaining type of content. Now, the interesting thing was a guy that owned that company uh, split with them and he'd set up another company. And I came up with the same sort of concept and, and, and did this uh, similar style. And they both accepted it because they were actually brother-in-laws. Uh, there, was, there was a falling out. But the what happened was it's only just recently that I've seen this. Now I I optimized the site for this sort of style back in oh, it's, it's at least five years ago, right? I haven't touched it, I haven't touched it again once, and it's still number three. It's number three for the for its major search term, and that was using the site what I call the size word banks. I did I had to do it all manually. Now I just do a click and it does it all for me. So it's it's that process it was just an ex exceedingly good process for for getting really good content, and uh, the the story is what well, follows out the the guy that uh, there was a guy who had taken over didn't like the sort of humorous angle even though he was he was actually number one and he'd been number one for some some length of time for all of his main, major keywords, but what. What happened was he had some investors who wanted to make it, well, in quotation marks, more professional, right? And so he took the humour out of it. Well, to cut a long story short, uh, that that's kept him in the in the ballpark. Uh, but it's like you're in the pack. But what happens is when you create creative content, you actually go ahead of the pack, and that's what's happened with the, this other particular client. And uh, we we suddenly realised. I went back and did some analysis of when it was the was the humorous style or creative style content, and the dwell time was almost double. You know, the bounce rate was was sort of a non-existent, and people were reading it because it was engaging and because it was you know creative. And so 
he's actually uh, just after a discussion with him and, and promoting the figures to him he said well let's rewrite this let's do it all again and put a, put a new spin on it well now it's going to be far quicker for me to be able to do that because I can use use these tools to do that and uh, so creativity is at the core of this uh, whereas you, you know most people on GPT uh, chat GPT you've got this feeling yes it's good good content it's sort of like a bit like a brochure and it, and, it, and it's got really good um, uh, they usually have fairly good semantic entities and, and co-occurrence that you know the, the, they work but they don't grab the attention and I think I think actually Google is really you know, really sort of promoting, I know, unique content and unique content that's the banner on my um, Facebook mastermind unique content wins and so at the end of the day uh, these tools produce that unique content right so that's what they're all about uh, so I'll just go back into um, AI professional uh, so there's you know there's certain flavors so AI professional will be more of a marketing sort of uh, speak I know, but they have it has flavor like the, a website that will blow your client's mind you know that web, de web design is more than just making things look pretty it's about creating an experience that draws people in and keeps them engaged so it's, t it's saying the, the same sort of things that i'm discussing but you know it, in some ways probably better than what i'm saying and so i authored it to do that now the other side of the authoring process is authoring at the prompt and what these tags uh, have done has made that a whole heap easier, right? So you can use wordplay, you can insert words, so you can put your keywords in uh, or your semantic entities. So if I wanted to put insert words in there, I can put in, say, uh, development, so, you know, keywords. And if you put, say, web development, which is will be a well, website development, for instance, uh, you can then put a comma and put say a ux design for instance or something like that right so you can put it you know a good a good amount of um keywords in there and it will put it into the content and so but it makes it easier just having used the words so you don't have to type that uh, add emotion you can you can add emotion so uh, one of the things i've added and synonyms of because that makes it very very the type of thing so you know worry, worry you know you can go through famous sort of concepts of, of how you run people through a, through a story so emotion of worry and then relief is the the, the last and uh, happy for instance right and synonyms of so you, that will actually then put that stuff put that stuff into your output so let, let's just make sure that we've got the right ones there if they're uh, yep. So we can activate that and do it so it's animated this time. So it animates the prompt very fast. So that, that just comes up. It's only for reference uh, that turns up. Uh, it's good to actually see that because sometimes you look at it and you just go back and think, okay, I'll just change it, change it, try a different tag. Uh, so so obviously you see UX design and website development come up, come up in that first paragraph. Uh, so it's it's a way of getting that information into that content and then playing around with the flavor. It's sort of like a recipe. Uh, but with prompt engineering, you've got to explain everything. There is no template. This is the whole thing that people don't understand about templates. When you when you write and get chat GPT, you're just talking to the platform. There is no template. There is no flavor. And you can only get flavor by explaining what you want. And you've got to go to quite an extent and there's a lot of people and a lot of things out there explaining about this prompt engineering. But as Sam Altman said, in five years, it's not going to be happening. You'll just be talking to the machine. And that, and, and I think it'll be sooner, actually, because you can actually talk to my my templates and they, they already have that filter already built in just by using talk about web design. I mean, you, if you put talk about web design in chat GPT, it will, it'll, it will do it. And it won't be half as flavorful. And that's that's the major difference with my tools. So I'll go back and show you a few of the other tools. So that, that gives you an indication of how the agency writer is, is a, a really good one, semantic author. So And Think Differently is a particularly interesting tool. 
So you can, just to show you that, uh, you can just put in, say, web design and activate it. And it hasn't got the animated part on it yet, but it, it works exactly the same way. And it'll be far more, it'll be far more out there, right? And you can see straight away, there's far more sort of a little bit more hype. Now, the interesting thing with talking about hype, you can actually add hype in, hype it up. You can add adjectives. You can put, add archetypes. You can use wordplay. Uh, now, these are, these ones down the bottom are more functional things. And we've got condense output, maximize output. So if you're trying to uh, do a synopsis or just just make a short sort of statement of, of some output, you can paste that in there and then that will do that. A rephrase, obviously, is an extract UVP is a very interesting one. Hemingway's rules, which was the first tag that I ever discovered and discovered that the AI responded incredibly well to Hemingway's rules. And what, that, what it does is Hemingway's rules, if any of you have tried the Hemingway app, um, it shows you what what those rules are. It's that, that, that you can't sort of go and well, you can actually Google it and find out, but it's not so clear. But somehow the AI or Open AI seems to really understand what Hemingway's rules are. Other things are using brand, so you can put your brand into it. So say if I put use use brand, right? So I put a brand and I put um, I'll just put um, an art. I think they're capital. And then you put it, and you can use location, right? Uh, now I've I've instructed it to keep it separate from the separate from the brand because it, it had a habit of putting the brand and the location together, uh, always putting it together. So if I put say New York, and then I write use that activate that, then it will bring bring the brand brand branding in. Uh, so when it comes to web design in New York, there's only one name you need to know: brand intermark. Now. I'd rather have, um, you know, that brand clear. So you just mentioned, you just put in, don't mention it, and that will actually solve that. Ask a team of skilled designers know exactly how to create a website that not only looks great, but also functions flawlessly. And then it does does that connect it. And then down at the bottom, yeah, this is interesting, actually, the brand intimate, because there's a way around that, um, which I should show you and that's putting a comma and uh, i mean a semicolon in there colon and so if i put uh, but don't mention the word brand so this is how you if it leaks into the content there are this is the way to solve it but don't mention it uh, i mean you think how does an ai know that but it definitely knows it and this is all through you know thousands of hours of testing to get it so it responds to these short tags. So I'll just act, activate that. Oh, actually, I should, um, I'll just go back there because it won't mention um, Intermart, but don't mention the, the word brand, right? Okay, and then I'll activate it. So that sort of makes sure that it, it'll mention Intermart, but it won't mention mention the name brand. Still, still not coming up. You've got to be... Basically, you could edit that brand out. I'm just trying to solve it by, by using the tags. But anyway, that's that's generally how it works. Uh, create outlines a really good one. So I'll do that. I'll actually go back to our professional for that one because it's a really good one for that. So say, for instance, you're using I'll, I'll do it for hairdressing because I've always found that I've, that's a really good topic for me to use. I had a strong background in marketing for, for uh, some of the largest hairdressing companies in the world. And so it's a good one for me to test it out because I can, you know, compare it against years of experience. Uh, so if, say, say for instance, I want to create, it says uh, the default is 10 listicles, so you can change that to whatever you want and then activate it. And it'll create the listicles for you. And this is the way you can build long form content. So, so then you've got your listicles. Uh, so it just gives you a list of, of all of those. And you'll note that they're very, uh, very definite. It even shows the, the you know the main difference with the with the first word, right? So then then you can uh, what what I do is I create, I duplicate it. This is how I, my workflow works, 
And then, then I actually will, will just copy this. So innovate, hairdressing te techniques that will change the game, right? So just copy that, go to the other screen, take it back, and then just paste, paste that in, right? Just direct paste, then activate, and then it will write that section for you. So you can just progressively go through those listicles and create content that's sort of 2,000 words long. But as you see, it's, it's obviously very much a creative sort of copy that stands out. And, you know, I've, I've got a thing that I've been on this particular subject for many years. And I, I, because I worked in agencies, I knew how this worked. And a lot of people that are just working in sort of, sort of small, small agencies aren't aware of these sort of concepts. But, you know, whenever you think of a, 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 an advertising campaign that's in, that got into your head and it's just really different, it's the things that are different that stick. And if, if it's the same as everybody else, it's just like you glance over it. You, think, you know, it's sort of like if you see an ad on TV that's the same, just a boring old ad, you'll take no notice of it. But if it's something different, it grabs your attention and advertising agencies know what know exactly what this is and, and they use it constantly. And, you know, if you read a lot of top books from top advertisers, they will explain it in a sort of a, in, in a sort of metaphor, but practically, you, they're putting two ideas together that have never been put together. I, I call it semantic fusion. So you take one idea and that people have got got in their in their well established in their memory, then you've got another idea that they've got well established in their memory. Now, when you've actually put that together, and you they've done this with neuroscience, you can actually watch those two parts of the brain correct make a make a neural pathway a new neural pathway and strengthen both both angles of, together so it fuses those ideas together and this is what what I try to do in my content that that I try to make stuff that that is not what people you know not what people are expecting and and it and it grabs the attention and it's like talking about hair contouring now that whole concept is is uh, is quite a new concept hair stenciling you know, all of these sort of ideas, it, it sort of comes up with them. And because when you start reading, you think, oh, this is interesting. And it, it keeps people, you know, engaged. And engagement is the new SEO. A lot of people don't realize how important engagement is. It's not, it's not about creating thousands of outputs and, you know, thousands of GPT clone outputs and then putting them up online. And that's how you're going to work with, you know, get up to the top of the engines. I'll tell you right now. The longer it goes, the more this will be important. You know, the more unique your content is, the more, uh, more, uh, you know, more likely you are to succeed. People are going to stay on the site. They're going to convert because they're going to read most of the stuff. The, the, the dwell times always double. And uh, so this whole concept has been carefully thought out. It's not, not just, okay, I'm just jumping on this bandwagon. I, I, I've done this sort of stuff for years and I know how it all works. And so that that has been related or authored into the template as such. So I've authored the template. So I don't think I never think of uh, AI as being artificial. I, I've I've got rid of that idea years ago. The reason being is it's not artificial. This is not artificial stuff. This is writing like a copywriter. This is you know this is exactly what a copywriter would write. So there's nothing artificial about it. It's like having a servant or a savant that you can just say, do this, and it, it does that. But most people are still at the baby step stage asking questions of chat GPT and, and um, getting brochure-like content. But you want content that stands out and that really sort of does, does the business when it, when it actually gets to, the, to, the, uh, the, to your target audience, uh, which reminds me. I don't know if I covered target audience. Target audience is very important. So you can, or I can if it's a kid's audience or if it's a young adult's audience or you're targeting seniors, you can you can use that target audience there. So that's a, that's a really helpful one. And if, if you want, in some cases where the templates aren't quite so, quite so dynamic, uh, you can use things like hype it up. And I do that quite regularly. If, if, if the content is sort of more, laid back, I'll use hype it up and that will do that. 
and adding adjectives, that's very important as well. But tell a story is a very important one. Speak like and talk about is a really great way to start because it's more colloquial. And for some reason, the AI responds really well to that. So you can either use keywords or you can start using these to, you know, you can ring in and say, use wordplay. And it will use wordplay in every um, in every uh, paragraph. So then you activate it and it, it does it. So what I find is I I'm I check out output and then I'll go back and play around with the tags to see um, see what it will do. And you can see here that it's uh, make your clients here stand out in a sea of sameness. You know, and it's the the colloquialism of it, it really sort of attracts. So grab your shares and get ready to revolutionise the hairdressing world one, one cut at a time. So it really into a hub of innovation and artistry. You know, I, I don't know about uh, the, the the viewers, but if you try and get that same sort of result out of Chat GPT, it just won't happen. And so if we go back, I'll show you some of the. Uh, there's 12, 12 tools in the standalone app. So you don't need a phrase subscription. Um, it's an LTD deal. So you won't have to pay any, any more for it in that sense. So it's, it really is a cost, very cost effective op option. Now you, to get to the other menus, you have to use home at the top. Now we've been looking at the authoring ones under accessories. These are very, very helpful. So headliner is a tool where you can actually create headlines or a very similar method methodology, but all it will do is create a headline. And UVP Extractor does that. So, say you've written an article and you want a really dynamic headline, you can actually use UVP Extractor to get ideas for that headline. And this, this tool, Conceptual Rewriter, is being designed specifically to rewrite content. And so when you actually open that, it has it straight away, what you're going to do, rephrase, use seven paragraphs, or, you know, say, okay, I want to make it 12. You can you can create it. And so you can, it depends on the input. So you look at the input, okay, there's 12 paragraphs, I want 12 paragraphs out. So that's, that's the way to use the rewriter. Peter, um, uh, let yeah. me ask you a quick question while you're in here on conceptual rewriter. Um, yeah. I know you had a, a it, well, it seemed to, fall off after about a thousand words is there a limit now on how many words you can put in on the rewriter um it's actually increased uh, the the decreased and you probably uh, recognize this it decreased when da vinci when phrase turned to uh, changed to da vinci uh, when it was chat uh, when it was gptj uh, it, it was you know, could output a lot more words and then when, uh, for some reason, there was a restriction with Da Vinci. Well, that restriction is now now being taken off. You can output a lot more words. But, you know, we're not talking about Zimwriter or something like that. Zimwriter might be good if, you, if you're trying to sort of put out a huge amount of content, uh, but it's not going to give you the creative flavor in the same way. Uh, this gives you slightly more control. You know, I, I look at it, both have got their, definitely got their benefits, and, you know, I'm a good friend of Matt's. And, uh, you know, he's he's um, done a great thing there with it. I'm just hoping that uh, I can bring these tools into that and get the benefits of both of those together. And um, we've had sort of a few discussions on that potential, which I think would be, you know, really sort of put the icing on the cake with Zimwriter uh, for the people that who want to put out huge amounts of content. So for me, uh, I found, you know, because I like, a structuring content and long form content by using listicles, by using outlines and getting really, it gives me better control. Yes, you can give it out to a VA and proof it and everything, but they're not going to tell you if it's creative or not. You know, they're not going to tell you if, if you need to change anything that way. They only proof it automatically. And so at the end of the day, by doing it in segments, you're going to get what I've found. You're going to you're going to get far better content, you know, far richer content, and and it's one that will stand out ahead of the crowd, and that's the, the thing. Yeah, you you put out Jet, Chat GPT, you put out Zimwriter, all those sort of things, and all you're going to do is be in the pack. I don't want to be in the pack. 
I want to be I want to be out front, you know. So this is the way to get out front. That's that's my view of it. And so I've always been on on that creative uh, that creative angle, and that won't change because that's what what I'm all about, and that's why these are what what they are. So yes, length is, has been an issue. It's a good question, Damon, and uh, it has been solved. I'm not. I'm still testing it out how far it goes, but you know, bonus tools are quite an, an interesting thing as well. Prompt author, of course, which um, is is the one I was talking about earlier, and that works for for ChatGPT. Size search, which is a, a a very concise search engine and really good for answer engine stuff. I don't know if you've used it, but so, say if you just put web design in there, I've, I know it's using the same thing over and over, but it's a good way to to show you how it works. It will give you an answer engine like content, right? And it does it so concisely and puts so much into a short area. That's why size works perfectly because it makes it concise and makes the information really really tight. So creative, effective web design involves understanding user behavior and preferences, simplifying navigation, optimizing load times, and ensuring compatibility across devices are all important factors in creating a positive user experience. Furthermore, incorporating visually appealing design elements and intuitive layouts can enhance the overall aesthetic and functional functionality of the site. So as you can see, Damon, that could easily turn up in the Google Answer Box. So that's what it's for. It's for, um, and you know, I use it. I actually use it instead of using Google because it's it's Google without the clutter, and and honestly, it's so concise. You know, Google's relying on pulling it off web pages. This is relying on pulling it out of language, and there's a yeah. huge difference. We, in we've That's been here as the uh, to do the meta description on on. Oh our yeah, website. it would work perfectly for that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's great absolutely. For that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. And so I, I use it quite a lot. I, I'll just use it if I'm thinking if I want to find out anything about any subject, I tend to use it. I'm sort of conscious of the, the um, 2021 issue. So you can't really, at this current point, you can't you can't necessarily get really up-to-date information, but anything before 2021, you're getting really good info, even date-wise. And I've actually trained it to to not what, what a lot of people call hallucinate. So it won't come up with facts. I've actually taught it not to do it. So I always laugh about it when people say, oh, it's going to come up with facts that are not real. Actually, you can tell it not to. <laughs> it took a long time to work it out, but it definitely works. So, you know, it's a lot of trial and error. So, and of course, instant means, which is instant means is really a really good concept. I, I, you know, it was one of the first ones I used, even before I authored, uh, you know, Agency Writer, which was the first one. I, I was using it, and it's, it's had different name changes over, over time. So you can go, and, hey, just, you can actually get wisdom out of it. So wisdom, speak like, uh, so you, you just want to have a bit of flavor. Uh, so speak like a guru, and then create a name. And these memes are very, very helpful. Wisdom is not, not found in books, but in the stillness of the mind. It has a very guru-like feel to it, doesn't it? So you can actually control these memes in a very similar way. And they're really good for coming up with ideas. So if you've got a particular subject that, you, that you're interested in and you, you want to put something out there, it's a really good way to create, say, a, an image and, and tie it in with an image. And I actually use these instant memes directly with um, AI image tools. And the results are absolutely incredible. Most people don't think that way. They're not thinking outside the box. They think, oh, we've got to follow this. We've got to tell them what to do, be very specific. And that's what's gone wrong with prompt engineering. You know, if people use prompt engineering on these tools, it'll, it'll stifle, it'll put it in a straitjacket because it's already been told how to be creative. So why does it have to be told how to be creative? You know, it doesn't make any sense. But so unfortunately, uh, because prompt engineering is becoming sort of to the point of extreme, they don't realise that you can create templates and do all that anyway, and you can do it on generic subjects and it's not going to make any difference. In fact, it's probably likely to think, scratch its head and think, well, you asked me to do this and then you asked me to do that. What, what do you really want? You know, so the tags are very sort of streamlined. And yes, people can come up with tags themselves, 
But these tags have been that like gold purified through the fire. They're, they're tags that have actually worked carefully. Now the brand one was interesting because I, I can see that we can. I need to do a bit of work on that brand because in that particular case it was throwing out brand, but in most cases it doesn't. So there's a reason there, and, and I'll get to the bottom of it and adjust the tag accordingly. But then I'm doing the work for it, and the person who's using it doesn't have to do all that work. So I'm working behind the scenes to make sure that these things work. So let me hmm. let me do this. We're almost at the top of the hour, and okay. I've, I've got people throwing credit cards at me. Um, okay. So I guys. Before we give you the link, uh, Peter's going to give you a link to to purchase the bundle, and and I think you can. It, it's just a one bundle price. There's no upsells yeah. or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, guys, what I use this for, and we'll we'll hang on the call if you want, and we can show you a couple of workflows. Is I, I laughed when I saw his his browser tabs. Is he's got originality AI open. If you yeah. ever get in a stick a sticky situation where you can't get the originality AI to flip over to human. Oh, just toss it in here. I did. I use this to rewrite more than I do to create. Now what, what he's done by adding all these tags is I'm, I'm learning today also is, you know, shoot, I could just drop in here and, and create a complete websites. You know, you're, you're looking at pages on, on a website that you need you need short little blurbs that are engaging and creative. Uh, you know, you could do this for all the features, it, like his listicle example is, give me give me 12 things that a bookkeeper would do, uh, you know, services. Yeah. And then you take the, each service and you expand it out with professional or the agency writer. And now you have a complete web copy that you can hand off to a client and say, approve this and I'll go ahead and finish your web design or, or your marketing uh, offer. So, guys, you can stay in here all the time without having Chat GPT, or you can use Chat GPT, and we use Zimwriter. So, I get a lot of paragraphs that sound so much like a robot wrote them that I'll drop the paragraphs in and rewrite them with either Think Differently or the semantic, or the conceptual rewriter. I this tool is up on my desktop all day long, along with Chat and mid journey. Uh, <laughs> I play around with it, but I've got <laughs> some good prompts in here to, to do go directly over to mid journey and create some incredible artwork. Uh, and so mm. this is another use that you can use with it. So Peter, do you have the, the link that I can send them to? Yeah, it's, um, I can, um, type it in here. I just, uh, I'm just trying to get to the, uh, the screen to, to be able to the zoom screen, I suppose. It's the wrong one. Perhaps I just um, stop sharing. I suppose that would be probably the best yeah. idea there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, where's the chat? It's in here, is it? Oh, yeah, chat. Oh, show chat. Perhaps um, I just can't get to the chat area. But the uh, the address is just authoredintelligence.com, uh, then slash ltd dash deals. So that's fairly straightforward. So authoredintelligence.com slash LTD dash deals. And all of the deals are available there. And you can get it for phrase. There's a dual package where you can get both, all of the 12 templates for, for phrase and 12 templates for, for the standalone, or you can get the standalone by itself. Now, if you're wanting to save money, there's definitely a, a big saving on using the, uh, the web apps. And uh, it's a lot quicker. And I've made them minimal for a reason. It just is easy to use. You can get in there. You're looking at the content, nothing distracting you, and you can just go straight into the uh, straight into the authoring process. Uh, I use Phrase actually most of the time for putting documents together because I find that's quite useful. And there are other benefits of Phrase uh, that uh, Damon and others on the school will be fully aware of. So, uh, yeah. So that's uh, yeah. So that gives you a good background on on what it's about. I eventually woke up. Sorry about that early sort of <laughs> that early sort of part. I was, you know, four, it was five o'clock in the morning, and I was I just sort of I had I had my coffee here, but I hadn't had it. <laughs> It'll be cold now. Well, let me let me do this. I'm, I'm going to help you out here. You can get some coffee, 
And yeah. I'm going to share my screen. And and this is kind of on the geek out session is, is we always like to get geeky. So I am going to open up a screen real quick here. I'll just share the screen here. Okay. So I'm back to the slideshow there. But I have a note. Yeah. Okay. It's authored intelligence slash LTD dash deals. And that will get you there. Yeah. Okay. And then you can just click on the LTD bundle, choose your bundle. And this is the one that I would recommend at this full authored. It's 12 templates you can use inside of Phrase, or you can use it as the standalone app. I've got Phrase. <laughs> I've got the standalone app. I, I find that I'm using the standalone app more frequently. And the reason is, it's, it, it seems like every time I go into phrase, there's, I've got to set up a document. It's got to load the SEO stuff. And it just takes too long to kind of get to where I'm, I, I'm going, even though I know I can go straight into the AI part of it. Uh, this is just very quick, very easy to use. So just a couple of things, you know, you've seen, you go to home here, authoring, I'm in this box all the time. I like the agency, the professional, think differently. And if you need just a few sentences, a few paragraphs, just go ahead and drop into agency writer light. Uh, semantic, semantic is good. I've, I've used this quite a bit, but I'm writing on a marketing, you know, I'm writing marketing copy. I'm writing copy that is uh, more on a, I, I guess, I, I know my target audience well. So these are, you know, this will get you in the ballpark with any copy that you're writing. But then I come over here to accessory. I use this headliner. I've, I've got this, in fact, it was opened up today, is I rewrite a lot of my blog post titles, uh, the headlines, with this little tool right here. And so let's talk about, I've been working on one right now. It's Bushcraft Tips. This is another one that beginners. Okay. That's what I probably would have started with on, on that. Skipping it using the tags. I'm just going to move this over here. I don't think that's working today. Yeah, I think that's on a default at the moment. Okay. And you can just keep hitting more and get you just keep getting headlines until you find one you like. You copy it and it's in your clipboard. It's ready to go in. So this is just very, very quick to do. I'll go back to accessories, conceptual rewriter. When I'm using Zimwriter, um, this is where I'm dropping in the paragraph or the section. And I basically just use this. I'll change it to maybe five paragraphs and hit rephrase. Uh, great, great results here. Okay. And you can, you know, I, I like using this little tag, tell a story and then speak like a, a marketing professional speak like I haven't tried rapper. I've, <laughs> that may be a new one, <laughs> but always no, try Hemingway. It's too. a good test. <laughs> yep. And, and and what I noticed when you were speaking like a rap rapper, what it's doing is you can see what's the important words. It 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 kind of from a rapper to a web design guru, they're they're talking the same language just. They're, they're, I think the wrapper kind of dumbs it down a little bit to make it more understandable. <laughs> but yeah. it's, uh, you know, try different uh, where you speak like different subject matters, okay? The beauty about this, it doesn't cost you any, any more money to, to run this multiple times to get the style that you want. And that's why all these tags are really important is play around with them. Uh, really, really nice stuff here. Uh, so once you have this, Think in terms of, okay, you've got chat GPT, you've opened up a new chat and, and you know, I've got AI, PRM and all that. So I'm going to use this one here. This is my favorite for writing a short blog post with, with all the HTML I want in there. And we're going to put in here human written. Uh, I'll just do bushcraft for beginners. Now, before I do that, I'm like, huh. I'm going to hop back over here and hit that again. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a, a better title. 
So I'm going to put that in there and I can add this. I'm going to make sure it's US spelling. That's the other one that I do. It looks like this, the prompt tags are not quite working on that one. So I'm going to create a headline. Yeah. Okay, this is a better title than Bushcraft Tips for Beginners. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that, head back over to chat GPT and replace that generic term and hit enter. Now, what this one does on AIPRM, it's going to write a table of contents and then it's going to redo it for you. In fact, it didn't on this one, but uh, there's different steps to building a shelter, how to start a fire. This is pretty good. Mm. Okay. Typically, I would just hit continue and I'm going to, I, I would finish it out here. But are you planning a wilderness adventure? Do you want to learn? Okay. Yeah, it's kind of boring. So I will copy this. I'm going to come back over here and hit accessories, go back up to, here's my conceptual rewriter. Rephrase. And let's just use two paragraphs. And let's see if there's any other. I'm going to tell it as a story. And I'm going to speak like I'm trying to remember the guy that jumps out of the helicopter. He's an English guy. He's a TV personality. Bills. Bear Grylls. Okay. That's how, and I don't know if I spelled it right, but use a TV personality in here. If you don't know anything else, I have a lot of content that's been read. It's G-R-Y-L-L-S. It'll probably work it out. So it's pulling in my head headline there. And it's it's actually starting to talk about the article below it that it doesn't even know anything about it. Okay, so I kind of like this, but if you want to just hit rewrite. Okay, now I'm gonna take this over and this would go into my, my final document. Now, one person asked me a great question. Okay, you got this, how are you editing this? Well, you can, you can edit it in, in Word and, and Google Docs. You can do wherever you want to edit it. Uh, use NeuroWriter. Use, I've got ScaleNet. I've got Surfer SE. I've got Phrase. So I like Phrase's editor because it's giving me scoring information. My favorite is Surfer. I'm going to drop it in Surfer's HTML editor, and I'm going to score it as, what, as well as rewrite it. So I would copy it over. And then I would replace this paragraph with what I just came up with right here. Very, very easy to do. What this gives you is engagement content. Uh, Peter had a, a great, I guess you summarized it. Everybody in this continent <laughs> has availability to chat or Bing's chat or Google Bard's chat. So they're, they're all typing in bushcraft skills, trying to write an article from them. The one, we're gonna have a lot of computer sounding articles out there that are kind of boring. The one that floats to the top of SEO, this is my strongest belief and I'm, I'm following everybody with AI, copywriters or tools that can elicit engagement, emotion, feelings, or connect people with other thoughts along with the content itself is what's going to float to the top of number one, page one rankings. So is SEO dead? No, SEO is not dead. The people that can figure out how to put emotion and engagement and I guess empathy in there and can tell it in the story of a traditional copywriter with you know, problem agitate solution or the AIDA method not just what chat gives you, but change it around slightly. Use chat, use ZimWriter, use, you know, I, I still use Jasper and Phrase to write my boring articles with, with content. But now I'm going to tune it up. I'm going to make it better than everybody else because I'm pulling out somebody's emotion that wants to read that article further down the page. So that's, that's how I use this tool. It is like I said, it's on my desktop or it's, it's in my Chrome browser. It opens every time. It is, 
I'm going to tell Peter, it's way too cheap. There should be another nine right behind it. <laughs> and maybe over time, I'm going to convince Peter to put, you know, another digit behind all this. This is. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I was limited by phrase, really. Um, because I couldn't, I couldn't provide monthly monthly packages. But I, the LTDs will come to an end uh, at some point, and at uh, some point very soon. And there will be monthly a monthly one, so it'll be reverting to that fairly soon. Yep. And, I mean, it's, it's exciting to be on the cusp of what we're doing, but it's even to me, it's even more exciting to be able to mold what everybody else has available, but mold it into a framework that that people enjoy reading. I've gone through and used this, and I'm like, man, this is an interesting article. I'm going I'm to read it all the way through. And it was on first mm-hmm. pass. <laughs> so, Peter, thank you for everything that you've done to give us this. This is just absolutely amazing. And guys, if you don't have it, I don't know why you wouldn't have it, but we've given you the opportunity to grab it today. And Wayne, anything that we can add in here? I, I know there's some questions that everybody's yeah, asking. There are some there's some questions. Okay. Uh, Marcus asks, is authored intelligence and phrase running on GPT 3.5 or GPT 4? They'd, they'd tested GPT 4. And GPT 4 is is you know obviously fairly new. So that there's a whole lot of things that, that are relating to it. I personally like when I, I was told when they were using them uh, at different times. And so I saw it as apples for apples. I could see the difference between GPT-4 and uh, you know, Turbo, which is the late, you know, it's the one that ChatGPT has been using it when it became popular, basically. Uh, those with the uh, Pro for can use four, uh, GPT-4 on directly. Uh, but eventually, I think um, the point is that we'll, be, uh, we'll have access to GPT-4 at some point, I can see that. But I, I really like the output for uh, the, uh, it seems to work really well with Turbo and yeah. the testing. And that, that's basically what Phrase is running on at the moment. So here's a question is from Scott is, so Phrase is no longer a program that is needed if we have this tool. Well, Phrase has got its benefits. And Damon, you'd you'd know exactly that. Is that sometimes it's really good to see what other people are doing, what he- headlines are there. Um, it's got a lot of good little SEO tr- tricks in there, uh, which are very helpful. But to be honest, I'm using it less and less myself. Uh, once you know, once the web apps came out, again, it was convenience. I just you you do three or four clicks to just get to the same place where you just do one click here, and you're in in there, and it's doing it. A lot of the SEO stuff is happening in the background. So I think it's good as a final run through to do it on, say, a Surfer or, uh, you know, I, I'm a neuro, neuro writer, uh, all of the neuron writer. It's those those ones are really good for, for finding it out. Uh, you know, I've, I've used market news as well. So once you've got your content, you can actually use other tools to just put, put a little bit of icing on the cake. But don't lose, be careful not to lose the flavor. That's the main thing. Yeah, and that's that's the 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 thing is, you you if you go to Surfer or ScaleNet or any of these tools, and they're telling you you need to add all these keywords in there, are you changing the context of the article enough that it's now it's going to be boring again? So mm-hmm. always keep that in mind. Is I try to get good scores now. Uh, you know, it, it, what do, what do I use phrase for right now? We we build listicles and helpful content all day long. Uh, that's what my VA, I, I think he's bored with that, but he's doing health. I've never found anything easier than, than phrase to do helpful content and listicles. Uh, we parse them and we put them into RSS Masher and, and we're off to the races. Uh, we're improving the quality of our post with helpful content. Uh, you know, there's, there's other tools that do it, but and not as fast as phrase. So uh, we did have a geek out session about you know, how to use phrase to do helpful content and how to do listicle building. Uh, yeah, if if you, there was a question, if we have purchased the bundle, do we need to purchase anything additional that may have been added? Not really. I mean, it's uh, it, 
basically the whole lot is there, what, what I've shown you. And the thing is, this sweep will get bigger. For instance, so I've got, uh, as I mentioned, I've got another tool coming out called Hypewriter. And Hypewriter, you know, it's it's still got that flavor there. But honestly, uh, you know, and Hypnostics, the, the, uh, I've got uh, dot .com Hypnostics, and I've been wanting to write about it for years because I sort of discussed the concept of Hypnostics earlier on. It's the knowledge of hype, most, and it's hypnosis. The meaning is the word is hypnosis, but it's the knowledge of hype. All they did was drop the G, <laughs> you know, it became silent. But every advertising agency on the planet uses it. And there's, you know, you just want to have that edge. The whole thing's about having an edge. And uh, so a bit of hype always goes down well, you know, and who wants to speak sort of, boringly about a product you want to be speaking about it in the best possible way yeah and, and that's um, i think that's the seo of the future is hmm. everybody's going to have generic same content but the ones that are going to win the race are the ones that are going to be talking to the customer that the customer can feel like hey he's talking directly to me about this product i mean it's it's traditional copywriting but if you can get into the mind of your viewer that you're answering the questions before he's even thinking of the questions, that's and and you're talking in a in a format that he understands he's comfortable with. You know, it's very conversational. And that's what I have found that, you know, with all your tools, they are very conversational, especially you tag it with tell a story and write in the tone of uh, very, very nice. A couple more questions is. Walt asked if we have phrase plus chat PT, GPT-4 paid account, do we need anything else? Are there any content limits? I think that's a great question. Chat GPT-4 paid account, that's what I have. I don't think there's a limit because they they don't have an API. If, if they had an API, we'd be busting the limits. But if you're inputting manually right now to chat GPT-4, there's no limits on the paid account from what I understand. Uh, if you got phrase, you got chat GPT-4 and you've got this bundle package, I don't know if you need anything else. Now, I say that, I've got all the other tools. Uh, you know, we're, we're writing an AI masher tool that will replace Article Forge in the future. Uh, we, we find that we need to automate content through AI, but uh, you know, Article Forge is really boring articles. And, you know, we may be working with, with Peter to, to do an API integration with his tools to spice up what we write, you know, and, and to mm -hmm. make, it, uh, make it in a format that, hey, people enjoy the conversational engaging style, even if it's a 500-word article or a 2,000-word article. Uh, and that's what Article Forge doesn't give you. It gives you the facts. It gives you all the details, but it's kind of boring. So, uh, you know, with other tools, I don't, you know, if you got the three bundles, phrase, chat, and, and this bundle here, you can do, you can do a lot of damage. <laughs> there is still a cap on chat GPT when you use GPT-4, but it's, I, I don't think you'll hit it, but they've reduced it down there to 25 messages every three hours. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah. that's, yeah, you, you'll be all right with that, I'd have thought. Now, I'm using the AI PRM. Both, uh, I think Wayne and I both have it. And it gives you some very detailed prompts, like you saw earlier uh, with, the, you know, with what I was using here. It gave me a table of contents, understanding bushcraft. It puts it all in HTML format correctly. So I could just hit continue, and I'd have a fairly decent article. I take this article directly and put it into an HTML editor of some type, either Surfer, ScaleNet, or even just Google Docs. Then I go in and I start using authored intelligence to tune things up. If I have it in Surfer, I'm tuning it against an SEO ranked articles. So not only am I writing it so it's engaging and, and uh, conversational, but I'm also trying to get the keywords in that is going to help it rank as well, but I don't want to change the flavor of it. So, you know, write it with chat GPT first, then come over here to authored intelligence. 
or better yet, even if you're starting short articles, you're building a website, like we're going to be building in the next uh, few days, I'm using all these tools. I don't even mess with chat because this is the conversation style that I want to have in my website. So I'm going to be in the agency rider, maybe the, the light, and then I'll hit think differently. I'm very appreciative of all the tags he's added because I think two weeks ago, you didn't have all these tags in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big, um, big advantage. And uh, the, the mastermind group has been really good because there's a lot of people talking about tags. There are people that have come up with tags. Someone came up with the US and UK spelling, which needed desperately to be done. So, you know, obviously that's a very important one. And it's one that if, if you're writing for a, a US market specifically, you're probably best to, to use those with, with um, the output. It's a really good um, group, uh, you know, and those subscribers uh, get a real benefit from hearing from other people and um, coming up, who are coming up with ideas of different tags. But you can go too far with it as well. And to be honest, you're better off to use the ones that are um, in the drop downs. And if if someone comes up with a good tag and there's a, there's tags that I've put in there, you know, even my wife came up with a really good tag. Uh, she just came to me one day and she said, you should change rewrite into rephrase. And as soon as I changed it to rephrase, the AI did so much better, so much better job. Because uh, when they're rewriting, they're just tr- just playing around with words. When you're playing around with phrases, you're going to get a better creative result. So, uh, so I always sort of give her the credit for that particular one. Yeah, and this is, you know, and and I look at Mac. We we talked earlier, maximize output, condense output. This is how to make it longer, how to make it shorter. And, yeah. and you showing me the create listicles. I didn't even know that existed in the agency writer. Is you, you want an article, you want a multiple set of articles. Uh, this is a great way, just what he just showed us before. Uh, Colin Kinswella mentioned bushcraft titles, the way that I was doing the headline. Absolutely copy them, put them into spin tax, and then you have a spun version of a, of a really good title in there. So David asked, can you elaborate more on semantic author? Yeah, well, semantic author is specifically designed. I've got a very strong background in SEO. And, you know, I count Bill Snarsky as one of my personal friends. And one of the last things I ever talked about to him was semantic author. And really, semantic author is designed basically to do everything that Bill Slasky ever said. You know, it was designed based on that that knowledge. And he is the SEO of SEOs. Um, you know, unfortunately he passed away, but you know, he, he just was amazing with the, the, the... And he was, you know, I use specific patents that he knows. And I never patented them because I knew that if I put them in a patent, everyone would be using them in 10 years because they, they'd know what they are. So it's a bit like Coke or KFC or something. You don't give the recipe away. There's, there's no point. And uh, even though you might be able to protect it for a short short time, then everyone's got it. So it uses a particular recipe of, of, of actually letter pattern matching that I know that no one, and Bill would keep keep an eye out for me because he knew what that pattern was. And he, because he checked out all the patents, uh, there is nothing, I've, I've, I've asked ChatGPT if it uses it, <laughs> you know, and it was really interesting and it doesn't. So I was really pleased that it said it didn't actually, <laughs> to be honest. What I'm but, showing um, you is, is I'm using semantic author and I used mm. the, I spoke like Martha Stewart. Okay. Mm. She has nothing to do with bookkeeping, but she speaks mm. in a very comfortable uh, visual imagery style. So don't mm. be afraid to use somebody that's not a expert in web design Use somebody that that speaks in a format that you like like to read. Hmm. This is a wholesome and engaging story about the importance of bookkeeping. <laughs> now I might rewrite this, but this is a great little, maybe not a blog post, but guys, drop it into social posts and then point to a, a, a post that you have about you know book uh, remote bookkeeping services or whatever. Mm. But this is a great social engagement post to put into Instagram. I, I definitely would put it in my Facebook groups or Facebook pages uh, to talk about something like this. 
So mm. it doesn't necessarily have to be SEO related. All you're trying to do is get the click, get the link. Get yeah, the and if, if you don't want Martha in there, you just say don't mention it. So yep. for some reason, it, it, it always listens to that command. Yep. So it, it took a lot of um, trial and error to get, the, get it down to be so precise. But and at the same time, I'm into, into things being easier to do instead of having to rewrite the whole volume and come up with a, a you know, a huge prompt yourself, this solves all that problem. And somebody asked about mid-journey. So I'll, I'll do something with mid-journey. Uh, Zoom background. Guys, I'm, I have a new product coming out next week. Zoom background uh, with a cabin in the woods. I speak like, we'll do bear. I'll do him. Bear grills, I think. That's it. That's it, yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay. And I want to tell a story. I'm just going to use this one, Brent. Yeah. It's, it's, I could extend the tags in there, but I basically kept it really simple so people can just go in there. Okay. It's uh, a bit extended. Yeah. That's where the tags would be handy there. So I, I'll add the tags in there. Because once you say speak like, it actually does tend to extend it. But if you just put Kevin in the woods, descript, describe Kevin in the woods, right, and take off the speak like Bear grills, it should be shorter. It will extend it in general terms. What I'm going to do is it's this is this is okay, but I've seen some really interesting. I mean, we're going to go over to Discord here, and we're going to drop it in. So I'll do imagine, and I've, I've got a, a paid version. So I, version five, I'll drop it in and give it the five. From all this training Wayne did, I have to remember he's looking at me. So I've got to make sure I do it right. <laughs> and Wayne, I've seen this a lot. What is Q2 mean? I think it's a, a new quality level. Okay. I've, I've seen it a lot. Okay, when you're uh, Kevin. Hello? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take that out and let's let's shoot it over. Okay. So I've been playing around with the prompts from both using a president's office. This was a president's office at night, bathe in soft flow. I can't remember. I think I was using conceptual or think outside the box. And then I, I tweaked it a little bit and I, I went straight from authored intelligence into mid journey and did some mm. great. It's a nice result. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. And that's at twilight. Mm. And version five on mid journey gives you the ability. I mean, you can see some, see some of the results here. It gives you the ability to, to skip telling it what camera to use, high resolution, you know, 8K. You, you don't need any of that. I mean, look at some of these, just amazing. But I pulled a lot of this. I, I did pull some from AIPRM, but the president's library, I pulled out the, I think, one of your prompts in there. It's just, yeah. it's, it's very nice. I mean, you look at, mm. and you go full size with it. I mean, this is a mm. Zoom background that we're, we'll be offering in a package very quickly, very shortly. Mm. And I mean, you can good results. Yeah, very very good results. It's got the the vignette on the background and you know in the corners. Uh, let's see how we're doing down here. Let's do it right and let's spell. That was the problem. Let's get the spelling right here. So imagine. Prompted. Now I'm pasted in there and I hit enter. So we'll let it cook a little bit. Uh, but you can use this for multiple things. That's that's the beauty about it, is you know, don't be afraid to to just hit that more button, you know, play with the the creativity. I, I do this, I slide it over here all the time on the ones that allow me to do that. So I search. Yeah, I, I, the the perfect perfect prompts, and that's why they're stuck at the moment. Uh, but yeah, the, they will be opened up again, so they're they're definitely going to be able to use various settings. So and we've up, set it to five. 
One of the reasons I've been playing around with that is that um, Tommy um, from Phrase uh, told me directly that uh, they've had to put up the, uh, the actual creativity settings with with um, Turbo. So they've actually increased them already, even though it's not obvious in Phrase because uh, you're still using your one to five. Uh, they're actually, the sweet spot is actually uh, in terms of open AI, seven or eight, uh, whereas previously it was four or five. So it's it's changed quite dramatically, and that's the reason I've been playing around a bit with those. And I was trying to force them to to use a certain sweet spot. You know, I'm I'm using the tags here. Talk about a home office. So here, let's see. You think differently is is probably a very good option for uh, for prompt authoring. Okay. Again, it's going to bring in the flavor. You see. Yep. So we're taking text that's not really written to be a mid-journey prompt, but version five reads this so well that it's it just, oh, wow, look at this. Love it. Oh, my gosh. Well, th this will be added to the package. So then I just come over here and I upscale them. Wow. Have you seen this, Peter? Yeah, no, I didn't realize it could do this. You see, there are hidden sort of benefits. And I, I've been really sort of wanting to, I've been tied up with the release, obviously, but I've been wanting to really look into version five because look, the results are just incredible. Guys, this is this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> There's a hidden benefit, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, this is sure? a hidden benefit that only you on the Geek Out Fridays will will get this. Uh, this is it's brilliant. You know, we got to turn it into version five. That's the most important. And we got to make it a 16 by nine because it's going to be made into uh, Zoom backgrounds. Mm. And if, you, if you've never seen a Zoom background with one of these, it's it's amazing. Mm. Quality too. Okay. So we'll let this cook a little bit. So we're, we're doing a, uh, well, this is, imagine a bright yellow desk adds a pop of sunshine. <laughs> It's giving the whole lot, isn't it? It is it's giving. Incredible. And there's not one place on here where I said I need 4K written in, you know, with a with a Canon camera, you know, Zeiss lens. I, you know, that's that's the version four mid journey. Version five, it's it's mm -hmm. taking what you already have, or it's taking the text and it's imagining a an image from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some. Yeah, go, yeah. go ahead. No, I mean, it's interesting because the yellow desk makes it very, very strong into that area. But but still, it's interesting concepts. And, of course, you can throw them around and try several options. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's just incredible. <laughs> Guys, y'all are seeing things that uh, Wayne and I typically don't share with you. But, you know, it's it, you could put yourself in here. You know, uh, yeah. uh, as a Zoom background, I mean, it, it maybe you know, maybe there's one in particular that you might like in there. Really, really nice stuff here. This is you know using this think differently, yeah, uh, to create your own uh, themes in there. Okay. Interesting. Let's, there's a couple more questions up here. Uh, we, you talked about semantic author. So, uh, how many computers computers is this license to run on? Well, that's that's something that I'm um, been looking at because I've been I've been doing it in terms of phrase, in terms of the license that they've got or how many seats they've got, and uh, so I've had a limitation uh, that one could work with three. If people have had more, I'd, I'd suggest that they bought more. But there was no fixed rule, but in the future there's going to be a licensing thing. So it will tend to be, you know, I will have a special price for upgrading licenses if people want to have have it for teams. Yeah, and and you'll probably have an API before long too. That oh, absolutely. That's that's actually on the very much on the on the, the and we've got direct access into um, GPT four. We were given early access to create add-ons, so this could be part of the add-ons for GPT you know, for, for a GPT-4. Yeah. So, and seeing the result in, in mid-journey, I'm thinking, gosh, there's a huge amount of potential there. 
Uh, the question here, is there any content credit limits and is this tied into our own open AI API? Yeah, well, that's a good question. I mean, up, up until now, um, you know, I know Zim Writer use, uh, uses the, the um, OpenAI links. We probably will go down that track, at the, but currently at the moment, there is no cost. If, if, if the actual usage gets incredibly high, we'll, we'll just use the, the, and it costs peanuts anyway. And it'll just be a small amount for, uh, you know, normal usage of OpenAI. In the end, it's actually coming from OpenAI, so yeah. we can integrate that at some point. But at the moment, uh, there is no charge for it. Uh, Greg asks, is HypeWriter, is it going to be included in the bundle when you come Which out? Which one? Hype, well, HypeWriter? Yeah, it will be, actually. And that's the, the bundles will be will be the same. And In fact, today, for, for people who are willing to purchase it today, I'll, I'll give that as an upgrade um, as part of the package. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, and, and somebody asked, um, will we be in the mastermind group? Yes, everyone who who, uh, who purchases, I, I give access directly to the, the uh, mastermind group. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I think we answered that a couple of times. Uh, okay, we did that. And... Somebody's asking about AI, PRM. Uh, this is not really a call for that. Uh, it, it, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that one later. Uh, it's, it's not related to what we're talking about here. Let's see. Awesome. Yes, we got it recorded. Uh, we're going to save it. Cross our fingers, everything goes through. <laughs> uh, we'll have a good <laughs> recording out shortly, I'm, I'm hoping. Uh, Wayne, anything on the chat side? I've been answering the questions. I anything on chat that we can address? I think prompt engineering is now dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's any. Uh, there was being quite good using the Q and A. Okay. Good. Yeah, we've got. Uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, we do. We do have one. Don asked, which app in the standalone would you use to create informative articles for homeowners? from say a plumber, pest control company, or other home services? That's a good question. Yeah, I tend to use AI professional myself. Uh, I use it a tremendous amount and um, and it's just some really nice balance for that sort of thing. In fact, I was, I was testing it on drain laying. The companies that I was talking about that use the, the comedy or the, the, the sort of cartoon sort of like thing were, uh, people who are into um, unblocking drains and things like that and and I, and I work weirdly enough i work for three of them here in in my home city and uh, they're all happy that, that that i'm working with the other other clients so they, they don't seem to con they, and they've got their own flavor so the beauty with this tool is you can put out content that is really unique and you wouldn't know that it was coming from the same company and the cool thing is if you to me, if you want to spend something, just hit that more button and you've got different articles that you can spend, you know, one article at a time uh, that, it are, that are really well written. Instead of going word by word or sentence or paragraph by paragraph is rewrite the entire thing. So you can have four or five different versions if you're going into a spin, uh, you know, if you're trying to do that type of stuff. This is this is a nice uh, pave the way. I'm using WordPlay. I, I love that tag. Uh, it just pulls you into the article. Pave the way to for a, with concrete driveway repair. <laughs> Time to smooth out those bumps and cracks. <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful, beautiful. I'm, I'm I'm very very excited about using it. Every time I go in, I'm learning something new on this. Uh, yeah. Jill, Jill asks, is there documentation to explain how to use the various apps? Yeah, I've got a help file that I'm building right now. It's actually an agency. I can see it in Agency Writer. It's it, it hasn't been filled out yet, but I've I've got the content. I'm just starting to do it. So you can see the the speech file and the question mark. That will actually be a help file. So it will just all the help information will be in there. So I'm working on that at the moment. 
because I, I, I've got a lot of questions in the mastermind for this type of stuff. And I thought, why not build it into the uh, to the product? And then you've got full access to the information on how to use it. And a lot of the stuff that we've covered today will be in those, in those and there'll be videos inside there as well. Yeah, guys, y'all want me to tell you the hardest part? The, the, I wouldn't say it's a con, but the hardest part with authored intelligence is deciding which ones to use. <laughs> So I invite you, mm. use every one of them, try them all out. <laughs> this is this is a great, great show today. Wayne, we're going to close up anything on your side. No, all good. Thanks very much, Peter, for joining us. Peter, thank you very yeah. much. I've, I've learned a lot. And whenever uh, Wayne and I learn from the masters, we 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 think we're, we're better, <laughs> at least until after the call, we go, what did he say? <laughs> Yeah, no, thanks very much for inviting me. I really appreciate it. And um, just hopefully, um, you know, the audience um, uh, can find some benefit. It's a good opportunity. And while the LTD deals are still available, now's the time. Yep. Yeah, guys, this is this is a what I would consider a no brainer. Um, you know, it's, it's one of these things that you can cut down on your cost on other things. Uh, we're, you know, we're going full bore several people have asked about, well, can I just leave freight? You can do whatever you want. It's it's your money. We're using freight. I, this is not a convert to, you know, it, it's not to stop what you're doing. It's to add something else in your toolbox that you'll use every single day is how do you tune up your, your content? This is how. So phrase could still be your main uh, content creation or it could be chat, or it could be Zimrider, or, or any of the other tools out there. Somebody asked also, can I drop Jasper? Yes. Mm. That's all I'm going to say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, mm. thank you for joining us today, Peter. We'll have the recording, and I'll, I'll share it with your group, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Uh, in, be great. in a couple hours here. Uh, yep. Thank you guys for joining us today. I hope you got a lot out of it. This is Geek Out. Fridays. I'm your host, Damon Nelson, along with Wayne and our special guest, Peter Hathley. Thank you for attending today. Bye-bye. Cheers, everyone. Bye.